Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Very short interview for you today. Uh, hopefully there's something in it that you, uh, you enjoy. Uh, this is with the head of the CBI and Communities program in Malta. Uh, I didn't unfortunately have very long to record uh, the film in this, uh, this particular case. We got, uh, you know, by the time you do all the other talking uh, beforehand, etc., it was uh, very little time left for filming. This being said, you know, hopefully uh, there's something in there that you appreciate, and I wanted to at least take the time to, you know, put him uh, put him on camera and give him a chance to share with some things, some, uh, share some things with you. And uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you you know like it, let me know. If you don't like interviews, <laughs> tell me. Uh, appreciate your feedback all the time. And if you'd like help with relocating abroad, one of the interesting things is, I mean, the number of Americans who have been going for the Maltese program. I've been going up quite a lot. We've had a few clients who uh, have gone there, so that's kind of a change from the historic figures, and probably change in a good way for them, uh, because you know it's people who are uh, going to cause less reputational risks, so hopefully less issues for the program over time. Hopefully, it uh, remains stable. We'll see. They have a, a cap on how many people can go through that program based on the current uh, rate. So we're going to find out what happens over the next little while. Obviously, these types of programs are somewhat under pressure. So they have to be really careful about making sure that they manage them fairly well so they can keep the program going. It's something that's pretty valuable for the country. And so, yeah, if you'd like help with getting a second citizenship, getting a residency, moving abroad, international tax optimization, etc., please reach out to me. You can book a call, calendly.com forward slash Michael Dash Rosmer, link in the description below. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, share the video with your friends, hit the subscribe button, uh, if you want to reach out to us, you can also send a message to our websites, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com. And I'm going to look forward to seeing you uh, very soon. So I hope you enjoy the interview. Okay, welcome back everyone. Michael here. And we have Alex, who is in charge of communities and citizenships in Malta. Correct. Well, thank you for being with us. Welcome to Dubai. Yes, thanks for your invitation. Absolutely, 100%. So. Uh, Tell me a little bit about, you've also lived in Dubai for your, or sorry, not Dubai, in Malta for your whole life, right? Yes, correct. So tell me a little bit, obviously, you know, you're somewhat of ambassador for the country. So tell me a bit about uh, the appeal of Malta for people who are moving there. The, the best way to discover Malta is to visit it. Yeah. Um, I've lived in Malta all my life. I've traveled to many different places, but Malta is a very special place. It mm. can't be quantified in words. So. <laughs> Whoever is watching this should pay Malta a visit. Okay. And what are the people you're finding are coming and actually living in Malta? Because there's some people who, you know, go through the program and they spend part of the year there, but the ones who actually like relocate to Malta, etc. What do you notice that those people are? Increasingly, people are becoming much more mobile mm -hmm. and having a number of places which you actually call home. Yes. So, yes, people are relocating to Malta. Uh, in fact, we have some 25% of the population in Malta, which is non-Maltese. Mm -hmm. But Malta is very well connected to anywhere. Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, in an hour you're in Rome, mm -hmm. in a little bit over two you're in London, or you're in uh, the north of Africa in a few, few hours. So it's easily accessible from a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. Increasingly a number of people are coming to Malta to live in Malta, but tend to commute to a number of other places, mm -hmm. uh, more often than not, for family and business reasons. Mm -hmm. And so you've done quite a lot to improve the residency program in Malta. What other things is the government doing to make Malta kind of a more attractive destination for people? Investment migration and migration in general mm -hmm. will increase exponentially because of COVID. Yeah. So having as many products as possible to attract as many investors as possible is mm -hmm. key, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing. In fact, very soon we're going to launch a startup residence permit. Mm -hmm. We have very recently introduced a nomad residence permit, mm -hmm. and the idea is to keep on developing these products, mm -hmm. these initiatives, which are very appealing to anyone who wants to not just live in Malta, but also work from Malta, mm -hmm. and possibly also explore investment opportunities in Malta and Europe in general. So along that line, one of the things, I did a video recently and I was talking about how 
contrary to what some people might believe about you know, going and investing in a banana republic somewhere, actually there's a reason why capital tends to flow to some more traditional places. Uh, and one of those things is the legal system and kind of the protections that are afforded there. Uh, Malta is British common law, is that right? Correct. So what can you tell me about kind of like the investor protections from a legal standpoint if they come and invest I'll, in the country? I'll answer to that by giving you just one figure. Yep. Over 95% of all the businesses who set up shop in Malta mm -hmm. have never left Malta. Interesting. And that's been happening since the 60s. Okay. So we have companies which established their base in Malta in the 60s mm -hmm. and they are still up and running till this very day. Mm -hmm. It's not just one thing which makes us special, it's a whole structure, a whole country, the way we operate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about being part of something which it's difficult to explain in words, but you have to really experience it. Mm -hmm. And when, a, let's say that somebody went and invested in Malta, wants to get set up there, uh, is it fairly easy if they wanted to bring some of their employees to come and work there as well? Or? Absolutely. I'm also politically responsible for that. In yeah. fact, um, today we have joined the residence permit together with a work permit. Yep. We call it a single permit. Yep. It normally takes a few weeks for that to be processed oh, very and nice. um, even less for it to be renewed on an annual basis. Nice, nice. That's very good. And that would typically be like open to, of course, non-EU. Uh, yes, that's open to anyone who, yeah. in fact, in Malta at the moment, we have um, a population which is less than 600,000. 25% of the working population is non-Maltese. Mm -hmm. Roughly, it's 50-50. 50% of that is from the EU. Mm -hmm. And another 50 is from third countries oh. who are able to travel to Malta, live and work. And Malta's quite good at being multicultural, right? In spite Correct. of, like, of course, it's traditionally a, like an English-speaking country, etc. We've been dominated by every other culture you can imagine. <laughs> so the Romans, the Brits, the French, everybody came to Malta. There yeah. must be a reason for that. Yeah, there you go. You have like the Knights Templar and all the history exactly. of that. And yeah, that's, uh, that's great. Interesting. Uh, you mentioned you're going to do a startup program. Uh, is there some timeline on when that might be happening? We're planning to launch a new startup program very soon. So yep. that should be happening in the coming weeks. Yep. We're still tweaking the program before we actually launch it because we are very um, paying attention to what um, investors are telling us and what should be uh, the right initiative, the right product before we actually go online. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Definitely makes sense. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, talking to us today. Really appreciate sure. it. Enjoy. My pleasure. Yeah, enjoy your time in Dubai.